All right, Matt, one of the things that impresses me about what Kansas City does on offense is when everything isn't firing on every cylinder, you guys figure something out. Mm -hmm. You do something different. You do something new. And I was in New England in December, and you guys pulled out a play that looked absolutely bizarre with Patrick Mahomes down in a three-point stance he set for the first time since he was at the scouting combine. Sure. And Jarek McKinnon takes the snap. Just a weird, weird play. So where did the play come from, and how did you figure it out to do that? Yeah, you know what? It's a great question. And number one to your, your first part of the question is we love just – trying to have fun with these guys and then you know you have a play that they've never seen before being New England you know we've never put that on tape they're not drawing it up on their cards uh, in practice and we in the meantime have been practicing that play for weeks we've had it in to practice it and, and we joke about we and Andy it. never called it he never called it he just uh, and, and that's a lot of plays that coach does over all the years where it might look good that one week but we've had it in the playbook for five six seven eight nine weeks we call it the incubator so we just let it kind of grow and then when coach feels it's right he brings it out and, and that play in general Again, um, you know, we called it uh, Heisman, and, and you went through as to as to why, but it's something that we had in the archives um, in a little file folder that we have a video uh, of, of, of the, uh, I think it was the 1941 Penn team. It was okay, around but, that. Okay, but, but how do you look for those? Yeah, so there, there's way, you'd be surprised, Peter, over all the years of different ways in film that we can dig into and try to find, and it was one of the ones where we have several plays, uh, lots of clippings, lots of time of different ones. Some are a little bit outrageous that you just, you just can't make work. But this one, we all got together and looked at it, and we said, you know what, I think we might be able to do something with this. And so when you present it to Coach and he looks at it, you know, he, you know, he loves it, and if, it, if he likes it, it's going to have a shot. You let the players put a little spin to it. As you know, they went and put Creed at center. Or excuse me, or uh, Joe, uh, Tooney. Joe Tooney at center. Because it was in Foxborough. That's right. Give them a little reward That's in right. Foxborough. Yes, yeah. yes. So little things like that, the players put their spin on it, and then it usually – But let me ask you that. That's an interesting thing. Joe Tooney, who hasn't played center for four or five years, right? and you were at the goal line in Foxborough, things are not going great at that point right. offensively for you guys. So are you a little concerned that he's going to snap it over Jarek McKinnon's head? You know what? Not really because of the amount of times we practiced it okay. over all the weeks. And so if the play is in the game plan, coach is going to let it go. I mean, if he, if he likes it, if it's on that game call sheet, he's going to call it. You know, And, and so uh, uh, that's what he did. And then, and then, of course, you always want it to work. You, you, you hold your breath that nothing's going to happen bad to it. Because if it works, now you're able to kind of explain and bring up new plays like that that the players believe in and have conviction with and, it. And the play was... McKinnon gets the snap and he shovel passes it. Yeah. It's actually called a pass, yeah. even though it was just like an extended hand. That's all it really was. He shovel passes it and it's a touchdown. It's like the old school single wing, you know, the yeah. the, the Sally at seven or the a the, uh, little bit of the wing tee in there. So. And when something like that happens and you're watching, how much of a reward is it for the work that you guys do as a staff? It, it, you know what? It... it, it it means a lot to the coaching staff because we put a lot of time into trying to, you know, have a little fun with some of these plays wherever it's at, whatever situation. And you always want it to work, but when it works like that and they're a little bit confused and they're not sure and that you know they haven't seen it, now, um, like I said, it gives you a little bit more credibility on the beginning of the week when you first install a play like that yeah. to the players and they're thinking, what the heck are we putting in here? So when they see it work, it gives us some credibility. I was covering the Dolphins once this year and – Mike McDaniel told me a story about a play that he really wanted to play with that orbit motion mm -hmm. back around the quarterback. And instead of continuing the orbit motion, the tight end, Durham Smythe, stopped and he just blocked. And the receiver, it turns out, was wide open mm -hmm. and they scored a touchdown. And he said the first 11 times we tried it, it didn't work. Right. But he had so much in the bank with the players that they said, okay, well, you know, if they think this is going to work, it's probably going to work. And it did work, and it was a walk-in touchdown. How much do you have to gain the trust of your players for plays like that to be trusted by them? Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it all honestly, it all comes down to that. The players have to trust the play because they're ultimately the ones that make it work. And, you know, you'll see times where we might put in a play like that and all of a sudden, um, or a certain play that, that a, a player runs the wrong route, 
Uh, and this might not be a crazy play, just a normal play where a player runs the wrong route. And all of a sudden you look at it and you say, you know what, that might actually be a pretty good concept. And so sometimes you stumble into those, but when you put these plays in, and like you said with Coach McDaniel, some of the stuff he has and these other coaches around the league, um, the players usually have fun with it. It's unique, it's different. They want to be that guy that's in that orbit motion. They want to be that guy that's doing the shovel pass and the wing tee. Um, and then the O-linemen, they get a lot of the credit too on that play in the Heisman because there's some unique blocking going on there, yeah. you know, some misdirection. So I, I think in the end, you want it to be fun and it was fun. Just my one other question about that. What is it about your staff and Andy in particular that you seem to generate a lot of these really imaginative plays? And what sort of direction do you get from Andy about those? Well, first of all, it starts with Coach Reed. Um, he's as creative of a human being and coach as there is in the NFL. I mean, he loves it, you know. He loves it. So he, he knows that it's Pandora's box for the rest of us coaches. If you have a good idea, a good thought, a good play, you bring it into him, and it needs to make sense. And if it makes sense, he doesn't care. Let's let's put it in. Like that's that's the beauty of Coach Reed, is um, and he's always been that way. This isn't something that just has happened over the last five years with Patrick. He's been this way for a long time, and so it gives you as a coach the ability to say, hey, maybe we go find this play or that play, put it in, present it to coach, and if he likes it. Now you get to kind of put your name on it and, and, and have a little fun with it. It kind of reminds me a little bit of Corn Dog last year. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. you had this incredible, you ran it twice in essence on both sides sure. of the field. Kadarius, Tony, and Sky Moore. And it must make you guys at 4.30 in the morning or whatever a little bit excited to go to work. Well, here's the other part too, Peter, is... You just that corn dog play, Coach Coach Reed was probably eating a corn dog when we named it. Yeah, you know. So um, we, that's the other part of this is there's some there's some interesting conversations of what we want to call a play, and that's always that's always the fun part too. You realize that after this game on Sunday, if you win, I'm gonna want to know what happened on the play that was so weird that you've never <laughs> seen before. You hold that. You hold us to that. Yeah. You hold yeah. us to that. You know that. Hey, listen. Good luck on Sunday. Thanks a lot, Peter. Appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.